Let's get into the top 10 causes of leg and ankle swelling, better known as edema. So you can get to the bottom of what might be going on and get some quick tips from me today on how to help improve the situation. The first few causes that we're gonna get into may include having some medical tests and a review just to be safe and rule out some medical conditions as a possible cause. I'm Angela, welcome back to the Neuro YouTube channel. So let's get into some of those top causes. Coming in at number one is looking after your heart. So having a think about your blood pressure, your heart pump, is it being efficient? Is your blood pressure at a nice safe level? If your blood pressure is high, or your heart isn't pumping as effectively as it should, that can cause a buildup of fluid in the ankles. It can also cause other symptoms as well, such as breathlessness. So if you're noticing these two combined, it's always best to get checked out as soon as you can by your doctor. They can run a few simple tests and do a physical examination. There's lots of treatments for blood pressure and lots of things we can do to help improve the situation, which will help to move that fluid back around. Next is our second medical condition that I wanted to highlight, which is kidney problems. So kidney problems can cause an imbalance in the blood of salt and water, which can lead to a buildup of fluid in the ankles. So it's always best to have a yearly blood test. So if you haven't had blood tests lately, get along to your doctor so they can rule out your kidneys as a possible cause. Next, we've got diabetes. Now high blood glucose levels can cause damage to those arteries, which means that those arteries and veins are not as good at pumping that blood back up towards the rest of the body. Diabetes can also lead to increased risk of infection, which can then lead to problems with swelling as well, as your body starts to try and fight that infection off. So again, some simple blood tests to rule out diabetes as a possible cause and get it treated if that is one of your causes. Next, we have pregnancy. So pregnancy is a not a medical condition, but in pregnancy, we've got an increase in swelling and blood volume. Now that is really, really common because of that increased volume. So there's simply more blood and fluid in the body. And often when you're on your feet all day, it can get stuck in the ankles. So usually lifting those legs up at the end of a long day, elevating them above the heart can help to improve that fluid and get rid of that excess swelling. But it's always great to have regular blood pressure checks when you're pregnant and mention that you've got swollen ankles to your medical team. Next, we have smoking. So smoking can damage those precious blood vessels and make them less efficient at pumping blood around the body. So we all know that we shouldn't smoke, but if you're noticing that you are getting swollen ankles, it's time to quit. Next, we have infection. So you can get infected areas in the legs that can then lead to extra swelling. So this could be as simple as a mosquito bite that gets infected or a cut or an accident that ha occurs. So as the body starts to repair the area, it increases the amount of fluid volume to the area, which is a normal response. But if you notice that that's not going down after a few days, you may need something like antibiotics to help improve that infection. Next, we've got a serious one, which is blood clots. So if you notice in one ankle, in up the calf, you've got a hot, swollen, hard area, and it hurts to walk, it could be a blood clot. You're at higher risk of that if you have been flying, sitting or lying for long periods, such as if you've been in hospital, and if you have poor circulation. So please do get yourself checked immediately if you have any of those symptoms alongside the swelling. Next, we have gravity. Now, gravity is a real tricky one because we can't help it if we have a job where we have to stand or sit all day long. So if you are on your feet quite a lot, at the end of each day, try and elevate those feet up above the heart. So up on some pillows in bed, or up on the sofa edge so that you can get that swelling, give it a little bit of support to help track it back down towards the heart so it can be recirculated. The next one is obesity. Now, when you have an extra amount of weight to carry around, the heart has to work that little bit harder to get that fluid and blood around the body. So being overweight or obese can increase your risk of leg swelling 
so it's always good to keep an eye on your weight and I will give you some simple tips in another video on how to lose weight easily. Next, we have poor posture and poor shoes. So that can be a problem because what happens is those shoes could be too tight and uncomfortable, which is simply squeezing and not allowing that blood flow back up towards the heart. Poor posture can be similar as well. As we hunch over, we lose that venous return as we squash our blood vessels in the lower body. Also, if you sit cross-legged um, a lot, sometimes that can compress the veins and damage them. And it means that the legs aren't as efficient at returning that blood flow. We've also got tight clothing. So if you are wearing clothes that are a little bit too tight, that can also lead to an increase in swelling as that blood just simply gets trapped in that area. So an easy solution for that is to loosen those clothes and make sure you can see that those legs aren't swelling any longer. So what do we do about some of these problems? So obviously we wanna get checked out by your medical team and find out what's going on. But if your swelling is caused by some of those other issues that we talked about towards the end there, such as poor posture, lack of activity, obesity, there are some really easy things that you can do. So I wanna give you some really nice tips that you can do right now at home. So the first one we've already covered in a couple of our topics there in our causes, which is elevate the legs. And that simply takes that pressure off the legs having to pump using the muscles. And instead, the gravity will help to return that blood and fluid back towards the top half of the body. So that's particularly important and essential at the end of a day when you've been sitting or standing for long periods or if you're pregnant. Next is seeing a podiatrist about your feet and your shoes to find out if those shoes are well fitted. Could you have um, orthotics or inserts into your shoes to improve your posture, to improve that foot comfort? So seeing a podiatrist can be really, really helpful as well. We've also got some really nice exercises and exercise is one of the keys to help improve leg swelling because we're relying on our muscles to squeeze that blood up and around the body. So things like calf raises, squats, lunges, marching on the spot, walking, swimming. These are really nice ones that you can do easily that doesn't require too much effort. And even just marching on the spot while you're seated can be a really nice way at work to get that blood up and around the body. Next, we've got some simple tool, tools. And sometimes you can find these things around the home. Other times you might have to purchase them. So we've got compression garments. So that ranges from socks to full garments, so long um, leggings. And what these can do, so we don't wanna wear them all the time, so we don't want our clothing to be too tight, but sometimes compression garments, which are really suitable and they are made for these types of situations, can help give that little extra squeeze on the legs to help increase that pump action up and towards the heart. Next, we've got gentle massage. Now, massage is really, really good for swelling because what it can do is really gently move and push that fluid back up again. You wanna be really careful that you start out very gently and you don't want to do anything where it's causing bruising or pain. So you can either find a provider that's very gentle or you can easily purchase some of our wonderful neuro products, which have a gentle massage action including our lower leg massager. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comments below any questions that have come up throughout the video today. I've also popped a link down below to join our fantastic neuro community. It is super supportive and it's full of people just like you who are experiencing similar things. We've got experts there to answer your questions and we've got a lovely, friendly community to offer support and help. And that is going to help you feel more confident in trying new things to help get rid of your leg edema. And lastly, we've got our fantastic Neuro app in our wonderful app where you can click the link below to access it. 
it will have fantastic resources from our experts. We've got stretching videos, we've got pain reduction videos, knee pain, foot pain, leg swelling. And you'll find so many wonderful resources in there. I have loved talking with you today. Please join me again for another video. Click the thumbs up and the subscribe so you get access to more of our videos. I'm Angela. This has been Neuro's YouTube channel and we'll see you next time. Bye.